Over the years, new images have emerged from our solar system with the continuous invention of spacecrafts and telescopes. However, there are some historical images from space that remain outstanding, as they were the first photos taken of every planet in our solar system. Stay tuned to the end as we take a look at these incredible images. Mercury NASA's Messenger took this historical snapshot of Mercury on March 29, 2011. It was the first picture ever sent back from a spacecraft circling the nearest planet to the Sun. It could be more attractive than other images of spacecraft rushing past Mercury and orbiting other planets in our solar system. However, it demonstrates the complexity of space engineering and NASA's space engineers and scientists' commitment to deploying a vessel in Mercury orbit. Over the following six hours, Messenger captured 363 additional images and downlinked some of them to Earth. The Messenger team is now going through the stream of newly returned data. Venus On February 5, 1974, Mariner 10, the NASA research mission, became the first spacecraft ever to test and execute the method known as planetary gravity-aided flyby, which was utilized to adjust its speed and trajectory to approach another celestial body. Mariner 10 acquired enough speed and changed its flight route to become humanity's first spacecraft to reach Mercury, the planet closest to our Sun. The Mariner 10 probe utilized an ultraviolet filter in its imaging system to reveal features in the Venusian clouds that are otherwise featureless to the human eye. It captured its first close-up image of Venus during the flyby. The photo showed dense carbon dioxide clouds shrouding Venus's surface. It scanned about half of the planet's moon-like surface, discovered stunning indications of a magnetic field, revealed that a metallic core accounted for nearly 80% of the planet's mass, and recorded temperatures ranging from 187 degrees Celsius during the day to minus 183 degrees Celsius at night. The surface temperature of the hellish planet is 460 degrees Celsius. It was ultimately the last of NASA's renowned Mariner planetary missions from the advent of the space age. Mercury was not visited for more than three decades until NASA's messenger sailed past and finally orbited the planet, which still functions today. Earth One of the highest images of the Earth's surface ever seen was acquired by the Explorer 2 balloon, which rose 13.7 miles in 1935, high enough to see the curvature of the globe. The V2 cameras attained more than five times that height, revealing the planet against the darkness of space. Clyde Holliday, the camera's engineer, stated in 1950 that when the movie frames were stitched together, the V2 photographs revealed for the first time how our Earth might seem to visitors from another planet coming in a spaceship. On October 24, 1946, a crew of troops and scientists in the New Mexico desert fired a V2 rocket carrying a 35mm motion picture camera to a height of 65 miles. The rocket-borne camera took a fresh shot every second and a half, as it ascended straight up then plunged down to Earth minutes later, crashing into the Earth at 500 feet per second. The camera was destroyed, but the film, stored in a steel cassette, was intact. Although on December 7, 1972, scientist-astronaut Harrison H. Schmidt, a member of the Apollo 17 crew on their way to completing NASA's last mission to land on the Moon, took the first image of the whole planet. Since Apollo 17, the previous crewed flight to the Moon, or any place else beyond low Earth orbit, no human has been able to replicate this view of the whole planet. Mars The Mariner 4 mission passed near Mars in 1965 and captured 22 photographs of the planet using a television camera. The image revealed the first close-up views of the planet. The spacecraft sent the raw numerical data back to Mission Control at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which Caltech controls for NASA where experts could rebuild the data into a picture. The telecom's crew reconstructed the image, impatient to see the official processed image. They printed the numbers on paper strips, glued them together and created a color key to match the numbers to their corresponding colors. They then hand-colored the strips in the style of a paint-by-numbers picture. The resulting pastel photograph was framed and given to JPL's then-director, William H. Pickering. Jupiter. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory was in charge of overseeing the Voyager project for NASA. On June 25, 1979, at a distance of 8 million miles, Voyager 2 captured the first ever image of Jupiter's southern hemisphere. Io, the innermost of Jupiter's giant galleon satellites, is seen in front of the stormy clouds of the planet. 
Voyager revealed that Io had ongoing eruptions substantially greater than Earth's, making it the most volcanically active planetary body known to the solar system. These eruptions are hypothesized to deposit sulfur and sulfur compounds, which give Io its distinctive red, orange, and yellow hues. At this resolution, it wasn't feasible to discern individual volcanic eruptions on Jupiter or Io, whose most minor features are around 125 miles large. Saturn Launched 16 days apart in 1977, the twin Voyager spacecraft are now on a grand tour of the outer solar system. They each set off on their own adventure to the planetary rings and moons. The pair of probes uncovered many previously unknown facts about Saturn and its moons. Still, Voyager 1 was one of many expeditions to take close-up pictures of the ringed planet. In 1979, Pioneer 11 became the first spacecraft to fly past the ringed planet. Planetary scientists used its images in conjunction with ground-based detections to better plot out the Saturn flybys made by the Voyagers and decide which features to study in detail. Uranus Uranus was discovered by British astronomer William Herschel in 1781, who at first mistook it for a comet or a star. It was the first planet to be located using a telescope. Two years later, in part because of the observations of astronomer Johann Ellert Bode, the object was widely regarded as a new planet. The images showed that Uranus is the third biggest in diameter after Jupiter and Saturn. Herschel wanted to honor King George III by naming his discovery, but the name Georgium Sidus was already in use. Instead, scientists agreed with Bode and named the planet after the Greek sky deity, Uranus. Neptune The first spacecraft to examine Neptune was NASA's Voyager 2 which flew past the planet in 1989. That was the first time humans saw Neptune up close and personal. With its teal and cobalt cloud bands, the planet seen by Voyager 2 seemed like a blue Jupiter or Saturn sister, with the blue color suggesting the existence of methane. A gigantic storm of slate hue was named Great Dark Spots, in homage to Jupiter's Great Red Spots. There were a total of six new moons and four new rings found. Caltech physics professor and Voyager project scientist since 1975, Ed Stone, observed, The Voyager planetary program really was an opportunity to show the public what science is all about. Each day brought more information. This historic first and last was the last stop on the Voyager mission's grand tour of the four giant planets of our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Pluto in 1915, astronomer Thomas Gill at Lowell Observatory used a 9-inch telescope borrowed from Swarthmore College to capture the first image of Pluto. Percival, a devoted explorer, set off in pursuit of Planet X. He photographed the area of the sky where Planet X was hiding but could not see Pluto since it was so much less bright than he had anticipated. In 1916, Percival passed away unexpectedly, without ever learning that he had captured a photograph of Pluto. The perspective of hindsight allows us to see those pictures as some of the first ones ever taken of Pluto. With his work at Lowell Observatory, Percival set the groundwork for future generations to study Planet X. After around nine months of photographing the sky and reviewing it for the movement of a planet, Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto in February 1930. What are your thoughts about these first photos of planets in our solar system? Let us know in the comments section below. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.